What's going on guys? CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to try to build the world's most powerful Intel NUC. And to do this, I'm going to be using the Hades Canyon NUC. Now I love this machine. This is my favorite computer that I own right now. It's great for 1080p gaming like it sits, but I'm going to be adding an EVGA for the Win 3 2080 Ti. There's a couple ways I could have done this. I could have used an M.2 to PCIe X4 inserted into a free M.2 slot on the Hades Canyon and just connect it to the 2080 Ti. Or I could have done this all over Thunderbolt 3 and I think that's what I'm going to do for this video. We're going to see how it performs. Now if you're not familiar with the Hades Canyon NUC, I have done a previous video on this thing. It's a great little machine. It's got an i7 along with a built-in Radeon RX Vega MGH. Now there's two different models. This is the higher end model of the Hades Canyon and I'm going to go over the specs of both of these. The NUC and the 2080 Ti. Then I'm going to show you how I got everything set up and I'm going to run some games here. I want to see if this thing can do 4K gaming. So first up, the Hades Canyon. This is known as the NUC8i7HVK. For the CPU, we have an i7-8809G. There's four cores, eight threads. Base clock is 3.1, but I do have it overclocked to 4.6 on all four cores. For RAM, I'm just using 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance 2400 MHz RAM. It is running in dual channel. And out of the box, this actually has two GPUs built in, the Intel UHD 630, and we also have the Radeon RX Vega MGH. Now this is an awesome little setup here. I've pretty much been able to run anything that I've thrown at this at 1080p with high and ultra mixed settings. It's a great little computer like it sits, but I want a little more out of it. So I'm going to add in this EVGA for the Win 3 RTX 2080 Ti. We have 4,352 CUDA cores. Boost clock of 1755, and I can't overclock this thing. I'm not going to mess around with it over Thunderbolt because I've only run into issues in the past overclocking over Thunderbolt. 11 gigabytes of VRAM. Now this is 352-bit GDDR6 at 1400 megahertz. Now this is the effective speed we could overclock, but I just mentioned I'm not going to be doing that in this video. This is an absolute beast of a card. It's a three-slot card, and in my main machine over PCIe X16, I've been able to run pretty much anything 4K, 60 FPS, and beyond. In order to connect everything together, I'm going to be using this Thunderbolt 3 dock from Sonnet. This is an EGFX dock. I actually had to modify the back so this 3 slot card would fit in here. It also only has a 350 watt power supply, so I'm going to be replacing that. This dock is definitely not designed for cards this big. I had to drill the rivets out at the front so I could open the case a little and fit this card down in here. So like I said, the enclosure I have only came with a 350 watt power supply. I'm going to be replacing it with a 550 watt EVGA B3. This should be enough for this card as long as we don't do any overclocking. So with everything put together, I just need to power this up and make sure everything comes on. And it looks like we're in business. It's definitely a tight squeeze, but everything seems to fit in here. And we do have power to the GPU. The fans aren't spinning right now because it hasn't gotten up to temperature. But I did use EVGA X1 Precision to set up a new fan curve, and it should stay pretty cool through all these tests. Before I get into it, I did want to show you that I am actually running the NUC with this 2080 Ti over Thunderbolt. We have that 8809G CPU. It's 3.1 gigahertz, but I do have it overclocked to 4.6, and you will see it jump up every once in a while. 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz DDR4 RAM. And finally, the EVGA for the Win 3 2080 Ti. Now, all of this is going to be running at X4 speeds or PCIe X4 3.0 speeds. Even though this is an X16 card and we have it connected through Thunderbolt, it'll only do the X4 speeds. All the games you're about to see running are in 4K unless otherwise noted. Uh, most of the stuff has been played in 4K. I did do a couple benchmarks at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K just to give you an idea. I also tested all of these games with the same settings with the built-in Vega graphics that comes with the Hades Canyon. First up, Project Cars 2. Now this is with rain on. I also tested it on a clear day. Up in the top right hand corner, you'll see the presets I'm using. This is 4K Ultra Preset. Nothing else has been changed. In the bottom right hand corner, you'll see what the built-in Radeon RX Vega MGH did, and this was all set at the same exact 4K Ultra presets. So remember, this thing does great at 1080p by itself, but like I said, I wanted a little more. I wanted these games to run in 4K, and that's why I'm adding this GPU. And finally, in the top left hand corner, I do have Afterburner running. This is going to give us our GPU usage, temperature, same thing with the CPU. We also have our FPS, minimum, average, and max. So with Rain On, Project Cars was around 64 FPS, which is really good for running this at Ultra 4K. 
So if you've ever tried to run this game on your rig, you know that weather can really impact the performance. On a clear day, we're doing 94 average. So everything you really need to know is listed on screen. I will be back in a little while because there was a few games I need to explain a couple of things in. Roach. Your kind spreads disease, defeatism, and desertion. So I've struggled for a while with GTA 5 and external GPUs. I've finally come to the conclusion that it just doesn't like them. And that's my experience. I've tested a bunch of different stuff. In order for me to get this type of performance at 4K very high settings, I had to turn grass to normal. If I turn grass to ultra, I would get an average of around 58 FPS. And that was even just driving through the city where there's not a lot of grass on screen. I don't know if it's a bug with external GPUs in GTA 5 or just my system. But I've had this problem on a lot of external GPUs with different setups. I also tested Far Cry 5, but I ran the built-in benchmark at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p. Now, I wish every single game had a benchmark like this. This gives you a really good idea of how the game's going to perform. And finally, we have Battlefield 5 4K Ultra DXR off, so ray tracing is off. I'm going to turn it on in the next segment. 
but I was actually surprised to see it run this well. Now I know it's not at full speed, but even on my main machine, I've had issues in this level here. There's just a lot going on, lots of explosions and everything like that. And to see an average of 43 with an external GPU, it's pretty awesome. But with ray tracing on, it's a different story. We're getting an average of 26 FPS, 4K Ultra with ray tracing on or DXR on. And yes, this is after the fixes for the DXR or the so-called fixes. But even on my main machine with this 2080 Ti, I'm getting an average of around 54 FPS and that's with an i5-9600K clocked at 5.1 gigahertz and everything's running normally. Um, we're not running through PCIe X4. So ray tracing is a real performance killer, at least right now. Hopefully some more fixes will be implemented down the road to make it a bit smoother. But for now, it's pretty unplayable like this. So overall, I think it was a very successful test. Is it the most powerful Intel NUC in the world? Well, I mean, it definitely could be. I'm sure somebody else out there has hooked up a 2080 Ti to one of these and maybe overclocked a little higher. But if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I do a lot of reviews on these Intel NUCs. I've recently done the Bean Canyon, the Crimson Canyon. I did the Skull Canyon when it was released a few years ago. This is by far the most powerful setup that I've ever been able to put together. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you want to see anything else running on this unit, let me know in the comments below. I originally planned to do some more testing on this, but the video's kind of dragged out a little bit. If this goes over well, I will do a follow-up video. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe share this video around, and if you want to see more, go ahead and click that notification bell so you know when I upload my next video. And like always, thanks for watching.